so we're going to actually install the speakers to get we're going to actually install the speakers now and in fact if jerry pans over there we did that one first just to get an idea of how uh, to do it properly and uh, uh, we actually had to read the manual this time around because it's actually quite complicated uh, before we start installing let me identify the different modules this is the lower mid-range module uh, mid-range tweeter and an upper mid-range module um, Depending on how high you are from the ground, your ears to the ground, and how far the speakers are to your listening position, on the back of the manual, in the back of the manual, there are different graphs that uh, once you uh, identify those two variables, they'll tell you exactly uh, what spike to use um, and how far you adjust everything and so on. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit later, but for now, we've already inserted um, some of the spikes. so. For example, over here, this, this spike actually has a rounded end, and this goes into the bottom here, for example. Now, because of our particular variable, our, our particular situation, we don't need to add any particular, any different spike in the back here. We just use the standard spike that's affixed to this module. In the case of the mid-range, there is... Um, bolt in the back here that allows us to turn it down and pivot the mid-range a little bit and at the same time it locks into the module which I'll show you later and then over here you'll see that these are standard spikes that you put at the front and this just screws down once we're finishing up the setup <coughs> the tweeter has the same small spikes at the front and with the uh, uh, spike at the back with the rounded tip and at the bottom, two of the rounded tip ones. And then in, again, for our particular situation, instead of using the standard spike that comes with the module, we have to use this number three, I think, spike that's called number three. And then finally, for the upper mid-range module, uh, actually, yeah, wanted to show you this part. This is the uh, calibration markings once everything is installed the um, these two spikes in the front will go in here and uh, we will adjust it according to the markings that we are required to do so um, now if you notice this rounded uh, the spike with the rounded tip this is how it goes into the speaker Is that bright enough, Jerry? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you notice this channel, the back is enlarged, and then the front is just a channel. And that's where the rounded tip goes in. It goes in here, and then you pull the whole module forward. That's how you install it on this particular sled. Same in the back here. Same in the top here, I mean. Okay. So the way the speaker is installed, lower mid-range module and the mid-range module both go in here. And then the tweeter goes in here, and then the upper mid-range module goes in here. Now, the way the factory tells us to do it is the lower mid-range and the mid-range are assembled together and then both as one put in here. And also, before you do anything, this entire sled has to be moved forward. And the way that you move it forward is this dial here. This is the micrometer adjustment. So, you, uh, let me unlock it. and you turn the wheel here and by turning the wheel the sled moves and while we're actually looking at this I, I think in the in the earlier video I already mentioned it but just in case I didn't um, the micrometer is very precise according to the table in the back of the manual uh, it will tell you based on your again height and how far you are from the speakers whether you use position A or position B and the markings on this here where to put everything so again we will get into that a little bit later but for now just remember you want to turn the entire sled as far forward as possible you want to loosen the stair step so again it'll be easier to put everything in and once everything is in you lock it and by the way these two bolts over here those are for you to lock the sled once everything is in position and everything is correct then you turn them and you lock it and it's the same as 
the sled on the top here. Now the sled on the top here, the wheel to adjust the sled is in the back here on my side, which uh, Jerry can show you. And that's the sled, okay? All right, so we're actually going to start assembling everything and then we'll put it into the speaker itself. So uh, we're gonna put the camera down and then Jerry's gonna give me a hand to install everything. Once that's done, we'll come back and show you everything in detail about how to calibrate everything, okay? Okay, so as you can see, um, we've installed all the modules. So let's start with the calibration. Let me get my notes. So once the lower uh, mid-range driver and the mid-range driver enclosures are into the bottom sled, the first thing that you need to do is um, make sure that the lower uh, module is sitting on block step number nine. Now, again, that's only for our particular situation. That's not necessarily in your case, depending on, again, how high you are and how far the speakers are from your position. So in our case, we needed uh, block step number nine. Once that's done, you lock this so it doesn't go any further. Then the second thing you adjust for is the micrometer. Uh, so the micrometer is over here. And in our case, it's A15.5. And so Jerry had turned the wheel so that it shows A15.5. Okay, and then finally, uh, when the um, upper, uh, sorry, the mid-range module is installed, now very, very careful before we go any further. You see this uh, bolt that we were talking about earlier? That bolt has to be turned all the way up so that the tip at the bottom is not protruding. Very important, if it protrudes, as you are putting in any kind of, well, uh, in, in our case, we put both separately, but you're supposed to put them as a module, as, as a sub-assembly together. If you ever do it separately, the tip must clear um, this brace over here. Otherwise, as you're putting it in, you can damage uh, the uh, lower mid-range module. The reason that we chose to do that was because when we installed the other one, we felt that it was easier to do it separately, so that's why we do it separately. Just make sure you clear it. And once it's uh, once this bolt is all the way up, you can very care uh, very carefully put the uh, mid-range module in and then on top of the lower uh, lower uh, mid-range uh, module enclosure. And then once it's there, you tighten this until you feel uh, a tension between this lower mid-range enclosure and at the upper. Um, there's a little tiny spike. I don't know if uh, Jerry will be able to capture it. Now, before you do that, I should say, sorry, you want to make sure that the front spike ma uh, matches the marking that you're supposed to be at. So in our case, we're supposed to be at three. So make sure that the spike is at three. And then once it's at three, you then turn the back, um, the back spike down. So it, 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 uh, uh, turns the uh, mid-range module at whatever angle it's supposed to be at and at the same time it locks it both at the top and at the bottom so it doesn't move. Hopefully that's clear. I know I'm not explaining it very well but so once that's done next thing you do is you put the tweeter module in as you saw us do. So the tweeter module goes into the upper sled and Again, because the sled has that uh, channel with the uh, ball in the back and then the uh, uh, channel in the front, you want to make sure that 
this spike goes into the back first and then pulls forward. And that's what we've done. And then you want to make sure that the spike at the back sits on the stair step that you're supposed to be at. In this case, our uh, block step is number three. So that's where it's sitting at. And once that's done, you lock the step so it doesn't go anywhere. Then the next adjustment is um, the um, micrometer, which is A23. So in this case, again, A23 is over there. And you turn the sled until it gets to A23. And then finally, the upper mid-range module goes on the top. Now this one, you have to be very careful. It has to go up high, go over the entire uh, tweeter module, and then the spike at the back and in the front have to sit into the channels at the top of the tweeter module. So you have to be very, very careful not to scratch anything, put it in, and then once it's in, um, again, because the back of the upper mid-range module has that ball uh, spike, it has to go into the channel and then pull forward. And then you want to make sure that the spike at the top of the tweeter um, enclosure now goes into the channel that it's supposed to go into at the marking that you're supposed to be at. So in our case, it's at detent number seven. So that's the marking number seven over there. And once you're done, you're done. So that's the assembly of the actual speaker itself. And then the final part of the installation is to dress these wires into um, uh, these wire dress, um, uh, what do you call these things? What would you say? Cable runs? Yeah, cable runs. And then you want to feed these wires into the appropriate binding posts. So Jerry can come around and show that there are different colors for each of these binding posts. So there's red, for example, purple, etc., etc. And they correspond to the cables and the heat shrinks. And if you're, if you're colorblind like I am, what you can do is be sure that it says, for example, lower seven inch mid, and that would be this one over here. And then upper seven inch mid would be this one over here. And then this is the tweeter, a uh, front tweeter. So the front tweeter would be this one over here. Uh, rear tweeter would be this one over here. And then the four inch mid would be this one. So that's how you do it. And then as part of the dressing of the wire, you feed it into these, um, uh, uh, again, these, I don't know what they're called. You, uh, they're spring loaded, so you pull them out and then the wire goes in and then it clamps back on. And also these devices over here, they loosen and then the wire can be pulled out or pushed in so you have a nice look to it. And once you've got a slight slack on it, you can lock it and so everything looks really nice when it's all done. So we're gonna do that right now and when we're done, we'll come back and show you the finished, uh, uh, finished product, okay? Okay, this is the last one. And there you have it. So once everything is done, you want to make sure that everything is nice and finger tight. Um, you can then get a, a wrench and just gently tighten it if you want. And now you're done. And as I said earlier, um, I've already done it, but you can loosen this gasket over here and then pull or push the wire until it's nice. And uh, so for example, this one's a little bit too slack. So I'm just going to loosen this push the wire in a little bit more and there we go so it makes for a very nice and neat arrangement of the wires and that is the setup oh there's one other thing um, when I'm finished tweaking with the speakers and I'm happy with the sound um, I will put the jack did we show the jack the last uh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay so we put the jack underneath the speaker lift it up at each corner and then you start putting in the spikes now we've uh, we've got them on the casters right now uh, they're a bit easier to move on carpet but we also have although, although i have no idea where it is we have these um, wilson made um, metal aluminum sliders they they are uh, perfect for sliding on carpet and uh, so you can actually put the spikes into the speaker first and then put the spike into this cup if you will and then you can also slide it on the carpet as well 
Um, that's it. So that's the installation video. Oh, one last thing. I guess we should show. I guess the other speaker has it. Let's show. So the speaker, when it's all done with the grills, that's what it looks like. Again, I apologize, the room is very dark, so you may not see all of the subtleties and the color and so on. Well, it's all black, but the, the shape. The speaker actually has a lot of very interesting lines. Um, Jerry might be able to pick it up if he uh, uh, mm -hmm. looks at it at an angle. And you can leave these side grills on if you like, or take them off. These grills, ultimately, for, for ultimate listening, you may want to take them off. For us, uh, we'll probably leave them on because uh, we get visitors and sometimes people poke where they're not supposed to. All right, next video we do will be our first impressions of the sound and uh, we'll see you again next time. Take care, bye-bye. Uh, so with the Wilson LX, the Chronosonic XVX and presumably the Wham, you also get a Wilson Jack. Uh, this is what it looks like. It comes in this leather pouch. Look at that, max load, 1,000 pounds. So basically what you do is, it comes with this, you put this jack underneath the speaker, and, oh, it's the other way. Comes with this ratchet socket, and you just keep doing this. And as you can see, it's going up. So you put it underneath each, uh, each side, each corner, and once you get it up to a certain height, now it's very important, you should always have a person standing uh, um, to the side of the speaker to hold on to it while you're jacking so of course it doesn't fall over. And once it's high enough you can take out the um, the wheels, uh, the casters, and then put in the spikes. Once that's done you then lower this in reverse and away you go. So very convenient, makes it a lot easier to um, change the spikes uh, that comes with the speaker. Very very cool piece. Anyway that's it. Okay, so uh, a little tip for, for you if you are installing the spikes for the Wilson speakers. This is how you do it. Um, you will see that there is a bolt and then there's this spike. This is how it comes like that. Actually, it comes in the, in the box with the nut already uh, installed. So the factory manual says to leave about two threads I usually leave three. I don't know why. I just like to be honorary, a pain in the butt. So this is how you do it. And then you screw this in. Now you want to make sure that when you screw it in that the nut also doesn't turn. And you get to the point where it contacts it. You hold on to the nut and then finger tighten it. This, you will notice that um, on one side there's a hex hole. On the other side there isn't very important that you should always put this side into the uh, um, the metal, what do you call this thing, cone. So you want to go in like this and the reason for that is that once this is installed at the bottom of the speaker, if you ever have to move the speaker and you need to take the spike out, sometimes this will be stuck inside the uh, enclosure and so if you take this out and this still remains inside the enclosure, you still have the ability to take a, an Allen key in and then turn it out and get it out. If it was the other way around, you can't, which means you have to use a pair of pliers and you will damage the thread. So don't uh, forget, this always goes into the cone, the metal cone. And then once this is done, you then turn it into the bottom of the uh, speakers.